Will fish consumption and will omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA, treat and prevent major depression? And I ask that question because major depression is a, a really huge burden of health in the world, with, with as many as 20% of people suffering a major depression in their lifetime. So um, in the 20 years since I first hypothesized this idea, we've had an enormous body of data assembled in the scientific literature. And uh, the Dietary Guidelines Committee of 2015 looked at the first level, and they asked, do dietary patterns mm -hmm. uh, predict lower depression? And they found that they do, and made that part of a new dietary recommendation that a healthy dietary pattern has mental health benefits. But I went further because a whole dietary pattern is, is composed of a lot of different foods. And from a molecular point of view, you want to know which food is really responsible you know, for it. And so when we look specifically at fish consumption in um, 26 different epidemiological studies with 150,000 or more people in the studies, there's a dose response between people eating more fish and having about a 20 or 30 percent lower risk of depression. So that's lovely, but of course it's an association data, so let's go the next layer and ask, well, what about blood composition? And when we look at the meta-analyses of blood compositions, higher tissue levels and circulating levels of EPA and DHA are robustly correlated with lower symptoms of depression in a studies involving a total of more than 3,000 or 3,000 uh, 3, people. So then, great, we have all this association. How about the brass tack? How about randomized placebo-controlled trials that really assess causality? So uh, we did uh, a very thorough examination of this question and found two things. One, you really have to have depressed people in the studies if you want to test if you're lowering depression. You know, if you wanted to test the effect of an antibiotic on pneumonia, you should enroll people with pneumonia in the study. Yeah. And if you didn't enroll them with pneumonia, you can't reduce pneumonia. Same principle with depression. When we separate out the trials and look at the ones only where there were depressed people, we have a nice big effect size of omega-3 fatty acids in treating major symptoms of major depression, including suicidal ideas and thoughts. Then we, we went one more layer down and, and found something really remarkable that we totally did not expect. We, we asked, well, is it the EPA in the formulation or the DHA in the formulation that's responsible for reducing the depressive symptoms? So we had always predicted that it's got to be the DHA because it's highly concentrated in the brain. But the psychiatric patients were smarter than we are. <laughs> and the data and the patients told us that for some reason, it, the formulations have to have higher amounts of EPA than DHA in order to treat depression. So that really gives us a lot of guidance um, first of all, to explain the heterogeneity, the differences in the results of various studies mm -hmm. on major depression. We can understand now that you have to have depressed patients and you have to look at the right formulation and that's good enough efficacy. And, and in many ways, the patients don't care the mechanisms of how it works and why. They just want to know, will it work reliably? And so we can pause a moment and say, yes, we have that base of knowledge to move forward and, and hopefully start to make uh, recommendations. But of course, you know, as biologists, we, we really want to know the mechanisms and we really want to you know, postulate some ideas about why EPA rather than DHA. Yeah.